Hi, it's Debbie Williams here and today I want to talk about people who um, think that they can't be hypnotised and sometimes they've come to this belief because they may have been to two or three different hypnotists who told them, oh, you're unhypnotizable," and I want to share with you that I don't actually buy into that belief and I've got good reason to, to suggest this. I'm a trainer and I've been an assistant to Paul McKenna for, gosh, since 1995 or thereabouts. And Paul used to send me many people to work with. And in the early days, I used to work with them for nothing. And the hardest people were the people who came with the belief that I'm not hypnotizable. They'd been to a couple of stage shows and stuff. And they bought into that belief or they'd been to a, a hypnotherapist. And most of the people that were sent to me had been to at least two, maybe three hypnotists before me and so it was one hell of a challenge and in the early days I used to spend time trying to convince them that they can be hypnotised but actually looking back the, the main lesson from that was it was quite a red herring and I don't do that now, I go more so of well, what's the problem and you know what do you want instead and let's go about getting that because this belief, oh, I didn't go under or I didn't go deep or I wasn't able to switch off. Even Paul McKenna says, you know, when you go into trance, people think that they're not going to hear anything, see anything or feel anything. And he says, and if that happens, can you let me know? Because you're probably dead. Trance is a naturally occurring state of we go into it in and out throughout our days, you know, driven from A to B. And sometimes you think, oh, where did I go? and you arrive at your destination because you went into a trance along the way. Yet if somebody had stepped out in front of you, you would have suddenly, um, oh, hello, my dog's just decided to come in. You would have suddenly woke up and been able to handle the situation. So trance, oh, that's my son now. Can you come here early in the morning deciding you want to do some hypnosis? Right, can you leave me for a minute, darling? You. and where was I so yeah you can go in and out of trance because we do it naturally when you've been waiting say in bus stop or in the post office and it seems like you've been there for hours and you look at your watch and it's only 10 minutes you were using a um, hypnotic phenomena of time distortion maybe you've gone into the kitchen and, and somebody said, oh, can you go and get the salt? And you go in and you think, I can't see the salt because perhaps you've said to yourself, oh, I don't really want to go and get the salt. And so that's a hypnotic phenomena where you um, are able to create a blind spot and you don't see what is actually there. And somebody comes in and says to you afterwards, you know, when you said, oh, I can't find the salt, they go, there it is, it's right in front of your nose. Are you blind or something? because we hypnotised ourselves to not see what was there. And so with trance, you don't have to go under, you don't have to go deep. It, it's just suggestions, but done in a linguistic structure that gets past the conscious mind to influence you in a positive way. Now, on the training courses that I've, I've assisted on, We've had the top advertisers come on these courses because they want to know how to influence, they want to know how to get under the unconscious level. So every time you've watched an advert and you've gone into the supermarket and you find that your arm is reaching for this particular brand, even though you may be saying to yourself, oh, I hate that advert, it's so irritating, yet you're still buying the product. These advertisers know how to influence you. And that's all hypnosis is doing, it's influencing hopefully for a positive intention. And one of the reasons you may not have gone into trance is because there's an element of trust. You know, I don't fight this battle with clients. I go say, well, we're going to do some NLP because, you know, the most important thing is we sort this issue out. And if I see them any longer than three sessions, by the third session, they tend to go in a real deep trance because there's been an element of trust that's built up. They've noticed the positive changes and they've thought, oh yeah, just, just give me more of that. There's also a preconception when you see a stage hypnotist who goes click, you know, and you see them doing what, whatever. But unless you have an understanding of what they've done in the setup previously, it would go over your head. 
And so many of the clients that were sent to me by Paul in the beginning, I said, well, I just want to click my fingers and the problem's gone. I think, yeah, I want to see pigs fly as well. And it does happen for some people, but usually there's a setup to get to that place. And it's like saying, you know, would you like to turn up um, at university for three lectures and then get your degree? It doesn't work like that. Sometimes we have to be trained to learn how to relax and learn how to switch off. And one of the reasons you may not go into trance is because there may well be control issues. Maybe there's been a time in the past where you weren't able to control a situation and it affected you negatively and perhaps still is. And so your mind is protecting you by not allowing somebody else to invade in your mind space to, to perhaps hurt you. And that's a, a damn good reason not to go in trance at that time. And so, you know, if you click on this recording here, you'll be able to get my um, pre-recording, Stop Worrying, Create a Wonderful Life. And I'm not gonna promise that it's gonna put you into a big trance, but it's gonna plant some damn good suggestions of making your life better. And a lot of times people focus on the problem rather than what they really want. And they're carrying all this baggage from the past. And unfortunately, counseling teaches us to go over and over and over what's happened in the past in the belief that it will make it better. I don't think you can hear that. It's supposed to be some sort of a th song thrush. But it's not very melodic. That damn thing at five o'clock in the morning goes for it. That one sounds reasonably in tune. But there's one that, ah, oh, you want to throw something at it, say, shut up. And sometimes we need to do this to the thoughts inside our head that are telling us why we can't do things. It's our thoughts that are trying to protect us, but sometimes they've gone off on a, a tangent that they're not actually doing the job they originally set out to do. So on my free recording, if you think you don't visualise, this teaches you how to build a visual memory. It won't necessarily teach you how to relax. I'm going to do another recording for that that's just a standard basic, you know, take a deep, deep breath in, let it go. I'll bore you into trance by getting you to relax every single muscle group. I tend not to put that on my recordings because after you've listened to it a couple of times, then you switch off and your mind chatter comes back in because you think, God, this is so boring. And so I try to be a bit more creative with weaving words to help you to relax. Now, again, going back to hypnosis, you need to think about what do you actually want from it? Do you want to be hypnotized or do you actually want to get better? And if it's the latter, then let's start focusing on what it is you want rather than what it is that you want to move away from. See, a lot of times people think, well, I want to not binge eat. I want to stop overeating. I want to, I want weight loss to be easy. And all of these things are focusing on the problems. And I happen to have products called those titles, mainly for pacing reasons, because I want to meet the person where they're at, but then sell them into, well, actually what you want to instead is to be lean for life. And that's the core of all my products for any kind of eating issues is to learn to be lean, healthy and happy. And a brand new strategies, brand new um, templates to run on and to work towards. And see, what if you could put all of the crap that you've carried from the past in this imaginary trunk to one side and just leave it there for this next month and spend 90% on focusing on what do you want instead? A lot of times people don't even know what they want. Well, let's set a big goal of being happy. Not in an egotistical way that hurts others, but in a way that is genuinely balanced and gives you satisfaction and reward. And as I said earlier, you know, you wouldn't expect to turn up for three or four lectures and get your degree. And if you did, then you wouldn't value it, would you? Because you think, oh, well, that was easy. And a lot of times, you know, we need to work at our solutions. And so what if the next sort of 12 months you spent 90% of your time focusing on what you want instead? And so you work towards creating happiness in your life. What would give you happiness? Because after all, you're in the top 10% richest human beings on this planet. You are guided 
already, yet you're brought into, well, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not guided, I'm suffering. Anyway, it's great talking to you today.